Hello, welcome to part 10 of this Ableton Live sound design series. We're working with bass lines. My name's Tom Cosm. This is part 10, the, the final part of this series. Um, and we've gone through and we've created these nine different bass lines in this tutorial series. They're all different styles, different sounds, different genres. Um, I thought what would be fun for number 10 is if we combine them all together into one track, into one instrument rack, and play with them, bring out the best of each one, and see if we can get something really techy going on. I'm um, going to write a bit of a kind of an ele electro y kind of tune. Uh, 130 BPM, as usual, I've got my kick, snare, and hi hat just as place fillers, just so we can build this whole thing around some drums. So, first thing I'm going to do, well, what I usually do is instead of MIDI track, and we'll call this bass like so. Now, we're going to load up an instrument rack like usual. But what we can do now, if we go back to our navigation, this is where all the project files are, um, and if you have these on your computer, you can do the same, is that we can actually open up the folder of the, um, of the um, project. We can then open up the project file, and we can actually extract any particular track out of that project file, which is a great, great quick way of getting, getting individual parts you've written in other tracks into your set. Now, unfortunately, we can't drag... Uh, a, a part down into the instrument rack straight away that doesn't work and um, what we have to do is drag it down below so there we go we've inserted that bass track it's and put that midi clip in for us if you remember we've got a bit of reverb that need, we need to add there but that's that's a good we can do that what we can do from here is now we have our instrument rack in this bass track we can actually just click on this instrument rack and drag it into our new bass channel and drag it into a chain and you see it's put an instrument rack inside of an instrument rack very handy you can do this as many times as you like, instrument racks and instrument racks you can get as complicated as you want um, but for now we're, we're, we're just gonna do it, do one level of it so I'm gonna rename this to bass one, remember this was our first bass and we can get rid of this bass track now, we don't need it um, if you remember we had this uh, kind of very simple cut off um, saw wave kind of sound but one other thing we had within this um, in this set was we had a send which had a reverb on it if you remember which we compressed over the kick now I'm not going to insert, in, insert a reverb now because we can't really send this bass channel to the reverb if we're going to rack up heaps of different bass lines because then they'll all get the reverb so what I'm going to do is use an audio track instead so command T a new audio track we'll just call this uh, bass uh, reverb like so and what we can do is we can tell this audio track where to get its audio from so we want it to come from the bass track which is this one here and then we can actually select what part of the um, bass track we want it to come from. So here's our instrument rack here, and you can see we have um, our instrument rack bass one here. Now we're going to select post mixer, which means that um, uh, everything that comes out of this um, this bass one part or chain of the instrument rack will get fed into this audio track. That now means we can go in and we can add our reverb like so, and make sure that the cue's on. Uh, this, this, the input's on, and we have to put in some notes first. Oh, I can just play some. So you can hear now that this audio track is now handling the reverb, kind of like a send, but it's in a little bit of a roundabout way. Um, so that's all good. Now let's just, we will, just to keep things simple, I'm going to right click and I'm going to group this into a, into a group, and we'll call this bass G for group. Um, that just means that we don't get confused with this bass reverb over here. So back over to the bass channel. Here's our instrument rack. Cool. Bass one. Let's go and add bass number two. Where are we here? So opening up the project file. And here's our bass line here. So we'll drag this right down underneath it like so. And remember we had... Where are we here? Here's our chains. So remember with this one we had an interesting mix of a uh, kind of a snappy sound and then a then an opening up sound as a second instrument chain to get a, a kind of a hang on make sure we go back into uh okay so what i've done is i've uh hang on I'm all over the place here drag that back in and now we can drag that instrument rack into our bass channel and into another chain and we can call this bass too so again, instrument rack inside instrument rack. This instrument rack has two bass sounds. So if I was to solo this and play it. So that was our kind of, I don't know what you call that, but a kind of a wobbly, kind of wompy bass. So that's very cool. So that's our bass one. Here's our bass two. Very good. Now let's do number three. I'll just whip through these and do them quickly. Number three. Uh, what do we have here? This was a Reese, wasn't it? So we need to put the sampled version in. 
just go through and delete that baseline, we don't need it. Let's drag the sampled one in, drag it down to the bottom. So remember we had this. Very nice reset that we've resampled. So now I can drag that into the base channel again. Drag the instrument rack into the base channel and into the chains and we'll call this base number three. Very good. Now what else do we have here? We have our fourth one here, which is a full on one I believe. So let's drag this, get rid of this one, we don't need it. Uh, baseline, drag down to the bottom again. We had bouncy full on kind of sound. Grab that instrument rack, drag it up to the bass channel, chuck it in there, and we'll call that piece four. Too easy, and then get rid of it because we don't need it anymore, that bass track. Right, number five, here we go. Number five, bass line again. Let's have a listen. So, this was our kind of a, a dub steppy one. Remember, we had some LFO automation over here and and this kind of rate thing here. First thing I'm going to do is just go in and, oh, actually we don't need to do that, I was going to delete these automation points but I don't think it'll matter. Let's drag this instrument rack up into base, like so, chuck it down there and we will call this base 5. It does actually matter, let's go over to these automation where we've automated these different um, volumes of the different elements of the space line and just hit delete. Oops, hit delete. So all that automation has gone. Excellent. So that's our base number five. Baseline number six. Let's go down. Here's our baseline. Again, I keep forgetting to delete these ones. We can delete those once we're finished with it. So this one was. That really epic -y disco one. Let's go in here, grab that instrument rack, drag it up to base, to a new chain, and call that base 6. Too easy. Delete. Number 7. Open up the project. Uh, I don't think we called that one baseline, did we? No, we didn't actually name that properly, but that's alright. It's still there. Remember this one we had a, uh, we used FM to get a very kind of proggy bass, so I haven't actually grouped that in the project file, so I'm just going to select that now, I'm going to right click and group it, so it puts it into an instrument rack for us, see there's our instrument rack, and now we can drag that instrument rack into our bass channel, and call this bass 7, very good, number 8, get rid of that track. Number eight, here's our bass line, and we had uh, that nice progressive -y kind of one that used automation and modulation to open it up. That'll be an interesting one to use in this uh, this particular project, but we can still give it a go. Drag it into bases, drag it down, drag it in there, and there's our bass line number eight. Very good, get rid of this. And finally, number nine. Let's open this up. Here's our bass line. Drag it in here. Remember, this one was using harmonics. Very cool. I like that one. Let's drag that in. Bass. Bass nine. Very cool. So now we've got pretty much all of the bass lines that we have uh, we have created in this tutorial series so far. So we can delete this one now, we don't need it, and now we have our fantastically uh, busy <laughs> bass channel. Let's play some notes, just see what it sounds like, it's probably going to be very offensive. Enable it. You can see it's going nuts, CPU is going mental. Let's make sure we uh, <laughs> unsolo it. <laughs> Very cool. Now just to be on the safe side, let's chuck a limiter after it. Bit sloppy, but we want to get through this as quickly as we can. So put a limiter after it so we're not peaking. Still sounds horrible. 
bring these levels down for us. Actually a better way to do this, I'm just going to control Z those, we don't need to bring the levels down. Let's go into our chain selector here with our chain selector ruler. What we can do is we can select all of these nine tracks and we can uh, right click over here in this, this kind of grid area and we can choose distribute ranges equally. Like so. We might have to drag these out long and then do it. That's the one. So now what that's done is it's given us a range of 0 to 128 and depending on where the slider is it's going to play one of those particular bass lines. The reason this is good is because it only uses the processing power it needs to for that particular chain. Um, you could tell before it was crackling because there were way too many things happening. It may not be on your computer but mine is uh, struggling a wee bit. Very cool. So now we can simply automate this uh, um, this chain selector um, like we would any other parameter for when we actually want to get to any of these things. In fact, it's probably easier at this stage rather than distributing the ranges equally as if we actually drag them all down and just make them so they're all right next to each other because then we only have to move the automation line up a single increment each time we want to change it. That's a much better way to do it. So I'm just going to quickly drag these back like so. The distribute ranges equally thing is great if you've got something which is a nice squared number or something which is uh, easily divisible by 128. Um, for example, if you've got eight things, I mean that's that's a that's a good thing to do because then you'll have um, you'll have uh, units of 16 for each one of your parameters. But for now, we're just going to have eight like that, zero to eight, which equals nine. So again, let's play some notes. Next one. Next one. quite alive isn't it? I like it. Okay so now we need to start putting in some notes so I'm just going to pick one of these sounds which will be good for creating a melody. Need to get this bass reverb in solo to get that effect. Let's use the first one, that's an easy one so I'm just going to go through now um, and write in some notes that'll sound good. Actually, first thing I'm going to do, I usually do this later, but I'm just going to put a compressor over this bass group channel, so just so we can sidechain it to the kick, just so we can get moving really quickly. Bring that down. Very cool, so now let's insert a MIDI clip. And we'll use G as usual. Octave lower. Make the first note a long one. We'll do the old classic triplety feeling thing. Very cool. I'm just going to copy that across and then we'll change a few notes. Uh, maybe make this one a G. Copy that across again so we can just change it a little bit more. And for this one we'll just make it a bit epic. Some triplet notes in there again, get rid of these ones.
I'm just using the blue scale here. <laughs> it's a, a pretty cheeky way to get results really quickly when you're doing demonstrations. And just because we have that uh, dis disco one happening there, we'll just do a, the standard dooka dooka with the opti op octaves up. <laughs> Now you notice the first thing that's happened, uh, well one of the things that has happened, sorry, is that it's imported the grooves as well when we drag those um, those tracks in, which is great because we can use one of these. Um, let's just use, we'll use the Swing 1675 I reckon because that sounded good. So I'm going to drag this groove over onto my bass line. Let's drag it onto the snare and the hi-hats as well, just to for good practice. Very cool, so now what we can do is we can go through with this chain selector. Remember we had this ruler up here that we could slide up and down. We just have to find it. I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse to find it because we're at the low levels. You see how we can move it up by increments like so. So every time we want to change it to a different sound, we just have to select that particular um, note in the MIDI clip, for example, there's one there, we just have to get in quite close, uh, pick it, and drag it, like that, and it'll snap to the next one. Let's just do this really quickly with a bunch of notes, just so you can get an idea, we'll, we'll craft it into something that sounds good in a second. So any trouble grabbing that line, there we go. It does actually snap to, because these are absolute values, it doesn't uh, let you just put it anywhere, you have to actually snap it to one of the lines. I think three was a Reese, wasn't it? Oh, I think that'll do. And we'll just go all the way up. Like so, let's just have a quick listen. The first thing I notice is that Reese which we've got on this base number three. It's an octave, it's, a, it's, it's an octave lower than everything else. So let's go in here. You'll notice we've still got the subs in, we need to get rid of those shortly. Um, we can actually get rid of the sub on the Reese now. Here's our highs. We've resampled it, so let's transpose it up by 12 over here, and we have to do the same for this one. So now this should be That'll work. Now, I should actually go through and delete the subchannels from each one of these bases because that's really bad. So delete the subchannel. Uh, subchannel here. We didn't. Actually, no, screw that. I know this is sloppy, but let's not delete the subchannel. Let's just go into this base, this this instrument right here, and let's just chuck an EQ8 after it and just get rid of the base ourselves. So I'm just going to click on the, this pole, turn it into a high pass. <laughs> So we've got no sub, and now what we can do is we can just create a new clip, a MIDI clip, which is already included in the space group. We'll call this sub. Just do it in a new clip, just so we can change things if we want. And then just uh, hold down the Option key and drag, or Alt key and drag this down. So now we have a sub, which we will use and operate it. Surprise, surprise. Very cool. So let's go back to what we were doing before with the chain selector. Um, open up this. We'll just click on the chain select uh, ruler just so we can get the uh, get the values there for us. Click snap back because we don't want to have it turned off. So what I would do is because this is a Reese here, uh, which is kind of nice on the longer notes. Let's bring this up to this one here, which I'm not too sure what it is at the moment, and we'll bring this one up to the Reese, which is number three. One, two, three. Here we go. That Reese could almost go up another octave, I reckon. Let's go back into it. 
transpose 24 which is two octaves 24 which is two octaves is that going to sound good? yep and I've actually missed out a note here let's go back back to our ruler there's a note here what should we make that one? we might as well go up higher to the top see what we get That's our techno one, which we need for another long note. Let's bring it up to there. We need an another note in there, don't we? Very cool. I remember the re-slide, so we can actually click on this, hold down command, and drag it back a wee bit. Very cool. And let's change these notes to... What should we change this to? Let's try this techno one. Which is this one. Nothing's really happening in that um, that base eight because remember we had a what did we have? I believe we had an auto filter after it. Which is here. So let's uh, delete the automation for this auto filter. We can do that by just selecting all and holding down command hitting delete. And then we can bring this up to, to the level we want. I'm going to just give this a bit of an amount. Put on beat mode, bring the phasing down. Sounding good. Let's just finish what we were doing here with the chain selector. Here we go. Very cool. I reckon that one would be good. Let's make some fast notes here. And we'll bring this one up. Make this one up to the proggy one, I think that was it. And we'll make this one the full on one. And I reckon this one we can go up to that nice harmonic one, baseline number nine. Where is it? Very cool. So that's, um, that's 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 basically uh, automating the chain selector there. So we can actually expand this out by clicking on the plus plus symbol. Um, so we can actually find our chain selector here. So now this uh, this little automation line for us, we can select that and we can duplicate it across. So it applies again, double it up, and let's double it up again and again and again and again and again and again, and again until we reach the end of the loop. Control Z back. And let's have a listen to how that sounds. Cool. That last note here. We'll pick the disco one for that because that was why I put those two notes in. Um, let's find which one it is. Pretty cool. Let's go over these notes. Maybe make these notes a wee bit shorter. I think that'd be a good idea. Maybe this one needs to go down an octave, I think. 
Maybe we can get rid of that note altogether. Make this one longer. Very cool. So we're getting something fun here. We're using, again, using uh, the chain select ruler and we're automating that so we can, we're just letting through individual um, bass sounds. If we go back over here and look, we can watch our levels. I'll bring this up. Oh, that won't work. You can see the automation happening here. Let's try something crazy, why not? Um, I'm going to take this base channel and I'm going to duplicate it like so. It's going to duplicate everything, the instrument rack, all the instruments within it, everything. I'm just going to save the project, remember to save. And now I'm going to drag this down outside of the base channel like so. Let's call this synth. Good spelling, Tom. Synth. Now, let's go. Let's take all this up two octaves higher. Let's see what happens. Very cool. So we've got a, a synth channel now too. I like that. One fun thing I just thought of that could work is if we use a simple delay over the end of this channel. So here's our synth channel, here's our crazy wrecked up shit, and let's put our simple delay over here. We're going to link them together. Remember, simple delay has two separate delays, one on the left, one on the right. If we link them together, we just get one, which is uh, a mono one. And let's put the dry wet up to 100%, leave the feedback at zero. Now, if we pick an increment of one of these, what's actually what's going to happen is it's going to delay the sound by that amount. These, of course, being uh, uh, whatever this number is over 16, so 16th notes. So this would be two 16th notes. This would be eight 16th notes. This would be 16 16th notes, which would be a whole bar. So if we put this, say, at two, the synth line is going to be out of sync by an eighth note forward or back. Let's have a listen. Might sound shit. That does sound bad, let's try eight. Let's try sixteen. these hi-hats a bit, make it a bit more exciting. We'll do it here. Let's bring these down, down a volume. Velocity is automatically assigned to volume or amplitude with, with the simpler. Very handy. A bit too much swing, bring the timing down. That simple delay isn't sounding good, so let's turn the sync off completely. Let's play with some millisecond values. A bit of feedback. Very cool. I'm going to record that automation. Let's just disarm that track. We don't want to record over anything. I'm just going to hit. Uh, record here and we'll give ourselves a quick time in and I'm just going to move this value Very fun. 
let's keep working on that. Fuck, we're at the end. Why not? Let's have some fun. New synth track. Synth. Oh, of course. Pads. Let's just put in an operator. Let's just make a pad. We've got this, got this inkling for a nice big lush kind of pad. We're in G, so let's go G. We'll make it a big long one. Uh, we'll put in a B flat, which is the minor third. Put in a D, which is the fifth. And let's put a F, which is the uh, flat seventh. So this will be really loud at first. And all sine waves, which we don't want. Let's go saw wave. It's an octave too low. Shift up. And of course we'll need to sidechain that. Get that pumping effect. Can't help but like it, I'm afraid. I'm a sucker. Kick. Threshold down. Let's make it a major, why not? So I'm just bringing that B flat up to a B. Put a pitch envelope on it. Bring it up. And we'll make the decay time long. Maybe build up. Put this release time. And let's just add in some notes here. Let's just bring. Oh no, we'll keep that there. Let's bring this up to a G, like so. And up to a D, and up to a B flat. Even though we're in the major key now, we can put that B flat. That can be a dissonant note, which can resolve back up to the major third. Very cool. Loop that out. Need some gating, put a utility after it, select the gain value, we'll go in. I use the gain and the utility to do a very cool kind of rhythmical gating effect. You can do it with the volume, but if you want to adjust the volume later, then, then it's very difficult. So I just select a, a chunk, drag the volume down, select it all, make an automation chain, and duplicate that across. And then over here we can even make these a wee bit shorter if we like. So that one's gone down. Bring that up. Let's make a nice short one. Duplicate that across. And we'll just copy all of this and duplicate that across. We can delete points if we want to get it rhythmically good. So I'm just using these automation points here to uh, to cut the audio at particular increments by automating this gain on the on the utility. It's a bit intense. Let's uh, we'll duplicate this out. I accidentally went 30 second notes there, so. We'll put an auto filter on it. In a bandpass, lots of amount, beat synced to something long like a bar. Less phasing, less amount. very happy with that. 
there's, the, there's all of our bass lines combined into one fun set. Hopefully you've gathered um, how powerful uh, racks inside racks can be and also using that, um, that, that ruler to actually pick things and, and move around. Um, I've done a tutorial video recently uh, under the name of Klitsch. Highly recommend you check that out if you're interested in how powerful you, uh, you can actually get with using the ruler. Um, I've, I've done some very uh, advanced things with the, assigning that ruler to ranges of notes so you can do things like uh, send uh, MIDI send a MIDI melody out and actually have it so each note that plays on a synth has a different effect by using that chain selector ruler. Thank you very much for watching these series. This is the end of part 10. This is the end of the series. I hope you've uh, stuck with me and um, if you've got any questions, remember always head over to the forums. Um, myself and a bunch of other guys are always more than happy to have a chat, have a talk and answer questions or just share ideas. So yeah, thank you again, TomCosm.com and stay tuned to the next one. I don't know what I'll do, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. Cheers. <laughs>